time to talk about a concept that I almost forgot to mention, despite how important it is. Uh, today we're going to talk about reference parameters and how they work. So I just created a C++ document here. So before I get into the logistics of exactly what reference parameters are, I'm just going to give you guys a quick reminder of um, how copying values uh, works in C and C++. So um, when you create a function that has arguments, one, those arguments are passed in on one of two ways. Um, Sorry if you guys already know this, you can just skip ahead. Um, the first way to copy, or the first way to pass an argument is by value, and the second way to pass an argument is by reference. Um, C, the C language is one of the few languages that really exposes the difference at an extremely low level between these two ways of passing uh, arguments. And C++ is no different, but it adds a few extra things to it. So just a quick recap, and I to float 3 f. I'm just going to initialize some stupid variables here. So when I pass these three things in, they are passed in by value. Um, there's two ways to think about passing something by value. For starters, it means the value is copied into the function. It is not passed in by the alternative or the second way to pass it in, which is by reference. When you pass in a copy of a variable, you can modify that variable all you want inside the function. But when that function returns, that value, remember it goes from uh, i equal to 1, i pass into func, into func, i becomes 1, 1 gets assigned to 50, but it's just a copy. When you return back here, i will be the value that it was when you passed it in, which is just 1. There goes 1. If you pass a variable in by reference, on the other hand, you're passing a reference to that variable. Now in C, the only way to do this, as I mentioned before, was simply by pointer. In other words, you declare an int star, which is a pointer to one integer, one or many, and then you pass the ad you, you call that function by passing the address of that variable. Then you dereference it when you change it, or when you want to access it at all, and by the very definition of dereferencing a reference, you change it, or you can change it. So now that I've just modified the first argument to being passed in by reference, it is not copied in. The reference is copied, or the, the address is copied in, but the actual variable is referenced. Now when I run it, it will be 50, because I've modified it by its reference. Now there's a lot of different logistical ways to understand why somebody might want to do this. For an integer, the only really way you would think of is, okay, you want to change it. Basically, you're, 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 it's another way of returning a value back from the function. Um, however, there are other reasons to copy something in by reference. A perfect example would be if the object that you're copying in is very, very complicated. For example, suppose it was a struct, and this suppose inside that struct you had something insane like an array of a thousand or even 4,000 integers. Well, as I might have mentioned, as I might have mentioned before, or maybe I didn't, um, when you copy a structure in, um, at the very least, it will copy the um, data one by one, which is very inefficient and can cause the CPU to get, you know, to emit more instructions or cause the compiler to emit more work for the CPU to do in a case where maybe you don't need it to be copied in. Or at the very worst, it can screw the internal structure's data up by copying the array when it shouldn't be copied um, just, by, just by reference. In other words, it's a very bad idea to take a very big structure and copy it unless you are sure that the structure is very simple and you're, you're okay with taking that potential performance hit. So for this reason, you will see a lot of people will pass in structs, um, especially SDL is a perfect example. They will pass them in by reference via pointer. So for example, if I declared big and I passed it in as the now the first argument to this function, it would look something like this. Address would be. And then if I wanted to change a value inside of big, I would dereference it by using the arrow 
um, to access one of the fields of the structure and change it like that. And then when I'm done, of course, b.x would give me back the value that I changed. Like so. Everything I've covered thus far, believe it or not, has nothing to do with C++ yet. I just wanted to explain or recap um, what the difference between passing a value in by reference and passing a value in by value is. For example, if I were to get rid of this, then it would be passed in by value, and of course it would screw up the struct because of this internal data array. If there was no arrays inside of here, it would, it would just be copied in and it would still be okay, but a lot of times programmers, when they're writing the code in C and C++, want to be as efficient as possible and they don't want to make the computer do any work that it doesn't have to do so they pass it in by reference. Now a lot of times you're passing it in maybe you only want to read it and you want to be sure that it's not going to change then you'll pass it in as a constant pointer reference and that disallows this line from being ran you can't change a reference so maybe you just want to use it as read only and then you want to be sure that when it returns you you get the value that it was initially set to which in this case was actually uninitialized but whatever. Okay. So that's pointers. Now let me explain what reference parameters are. As you guys probably know from previous attempts to or successes in learning how pointers work in C is they are extremely complicated. A pointer in C could mean a reference. It could mean a, um, a memory address to some random block of memory. It could mean um, you know, a uh, pointer to the beginning of an array where you don't even know how long that array is. It is extremely ambiguous. And um, veteran C programmers generally will take hints as to what a pointer means when it gets passed in. So maybe um, in this case, it's kind of obvious that maybe there's one thing. If it was followed by int n, they would know that it was an array of things. But it's still very ambiguous. So what C++ did was they invented something called the reference parameter, which is a way of asserting that the value being passed in is strictly being passed in by reference, and it is not necessarily um, to be interpreted as a generic pointer. So the best way I can explain that is with an example. The way reference parameters look in C++ are basically by replacing the star with an ampersand. Now this does not mean address of big in this instance. What it basically means is reference big. You've basically created a reference parameter inside of here such that when you call it, you know that you're passing the variable in by reference still and not by value. This, this, this denotes a reference parameter and, and not a, and not a uh, by value argument pass. The way you, the, one of the nice things about the magic of reference parameters in C++ is that when you actually pass the variable in, you no longer have to put the address of um, in here when you do that. As a matter of fact, if you do that, it'll tell you there's no matching call because you're trying to pass a pointer in when a reference parameter is expected. In other words, or instead, the compiler automatically grabs the address for you and automatically creates the reference for you, such that you can be sure that you can't screw it up um, in a way that you could if you had a pointer. Reference parameters are more restricted than pointers. It basically means strictly, almost like you would expect in a higher level language, um, this is just passed in by reference. And because it's const here, I can't modify it. You know, I get an error. However, if I do remove the const restriction, I can modify the variable from within the function despite the fact that it's not a pointer. Um, reference parameters can be very confusing when you first see them because it's kind of hard to understand what the difference is between a reference parameter and a pointer. Under the hood, they basically are exactly the same thing. The only difference is when you assign a reference parameter, you're not changing what it references. Once a reference parameter is initialized, either by assignment or by passing it into a function, it can never be changed to reference anything else ever again. If I do something like this, um, it will copy. It basically is the same as if I if I set b equal to something in, in the original function. As a matter of fact, if I do this, it will um, it will reinitialize the entire structure by value, and uh, essentially um, you know reinitialize it to whatever it was. So, for example, if I put ten in here, it's been kind of reset to zero or blank memory. So, um, like I said, reference parameters um, can never be reset once they're set. And another way to explain that without a function call, maybe to make this a little simpler, is that if I go down here and I create a floating point and set it to 5.0 and then create a reference and set that equal to f, when I change fr, either by assigning it, well, I guess that's the only way I can change it, 
I've changed f. Notice I changed fr there. I reassigned fr up here. I did not reassign f. f was set to 5. But because fr is a reference parameter f, when I print out f, it will, it will hold the value that was changed by the, via the reference parameter. That's essentially a simpler way of showing it, you know, um, by initializing the reference parameter this way instead of by passing it into a function. Um, you will see reference parameters everywhere. If, if you are you learning C++ and you want to use, and use a C++ a, uh, API or, or a library that's written in C++, you'll see these reference parameters everywhere. So it's a really big important part of learning C++ and that's why I wanted to at least cover it in, 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 a, in the slightest uh, and not gloss over it because it is important. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I forgot about reference parameters. Um, I don't think there is at this time. Um, but, but this is basically the initial gist of reference parameters in C++ and, and, and how they work. Uh, you'll probably see me talk more about them as, as the other videos come up, so I'm probably going to go ahead and cut this one short and just end this here. Um, so yeah, that's reference parameters. Um, stay tuned for the next episode, guys, and uh, thanks for watching as usual.